In this morning's U.S. Bank Economic 360, Jim Russell is back, just in time for cooler weather and a look at third quarter earnings. While always important, this particular earnings season will allow us to assess the growth prospects not only for the balance of the year, but give us an early peek into 2015. Jim joins Business Courier editor Rob Dahmeyer in the studio with his unique perspective. Gentlemen. Thanks, Peg. Jim, so the third quarter's over, but we don't know yet exactly what happened in the third quarter. Right. Um, what are the expectations for the third and fourth quarters? And, and maybe more importantly, are, they gonna, are companies going to hit these expectations? Yeah, uh, Rob, it's a good question. Good morning. Uh, third quarter expectations are for modest growth. Uh, and let's take a look at a couple of maybe trend lines on what that looks like right this minute. Year over year earnings in the third quarter are expected to be up 5%. In the fourth quarter, they're expected to be up about 13%. Now, we at U.S. Bank Wealth Management feel that's a little bit aggressive. And candidly, we do feel that companies will meet third quarter, probably exceed third quarter earnings estimates, but probably fall short of that fourth quarter number. Uh, uh, earnings in the past have really uh, progressed very nicely. You can see some of the chart here of some history. We have a dividend chart here as well. Companies have really progressed very nicely on dividends. You can see that 45 degree angle there and also operating margins which is extremely important um, and that has been very flat at historically very high levels and uh, you can see that trend line uh, there as well so I think there may be some puts and takes third quarter likely to be better fourth quarter likely to be slightly uh, less than expectations and what are management teams uh telling us about this or what, right. are they, what are they going to tell us about right. this? Right. This is the key uh, and that is the market is a forward-looking mechanism and in fact uh, the markets have been very volatile over the last let's yeah. say two, three, four weeks. Uh, the market hit an all-time high uh, in the middle of September. We're only 4% off that all-time high right now but what management teams are likely to tell us Rob is that the U.S. The strength of the U.S. dollar is hurting revenues for multinational companies. Secondly, Europe and China which are about 15% of S&P 500's revenues on a consolidated basis are very weak right now. So while the United States appears to be picking up some degree of economic momentum here in our own backyard, the, uh, the countries around us are probably falling off uh, just a little bit. Not off a cliff, no disasters, but growth rates maybe are not going to be what uh, was once expected. So not only is the fourth quarter being adjusted down in terms of earnings expectations, as mentioned a minute ago, but probably 2015 as well. That's causing the market a little bit of a pause. Now, uh, unemployment is down uh, pretty much across the board. Right. Some really nice low numbers, sometimes uh, below 6%, but how about job growth? Uh, yeah. Are we seeing that? Yeah, Rob, it's a great question. It's on everybody's mind. Uh, the job growth numbers are starting to make some sense finally. 5.9% unemployment, 248,000 jobs uh, uh, created in the month of September. The last uh, prior two months were revised up in terms of job growth. Importantly, uh, the job openings that are out there and available right this minute are at a 13-year high. Wow. Four, over 4.8 million jobs are open and available, so it's just a matter of matching skill sets, geographies, and other probably di important dynamics. But that itself looks like it's going to make some sense throughout uh, the balance of 2014 and be a bit stronger in 15, probably uh, leads to some wage growth as well. Wage growth, strong dollar, these are not conversations we've had uh, much uh, recently. That's right. Well, thanks for being here, Jeff. Yes, sir. Thank you.